Welcome everyone to another low-level fun live stream. Um, you've seen in previous videos some storage fail and I also had actually for some personal travel and backup stuff here this precious nice cute little um, Seagate 7, 7mm 6 slim. They don't sell it anymore and in retrospect of course it was overpriced back in the day. I thought maybe the design is a little bit cool or something. Um, problems, of course, totally unserviceable, and even if it fails, you can't even reuse the USB bridge. The usual um, Apple-like design does not follow function and uh, also data recovery and uh, whatnot. Uh, up to the day, I did not even found a single um, disassembling look inside of the thing. Uh, obviously, not sure if this is glued or whatnot, but anyway, um, the point is, I always wondered that I always like to keep some smart status of stuff, statistics and failing and stuff. And when I got this some four years or so, or five back, I always wondered that smart doesn't work, right? And today was sorting here some um, stuff and wanted to check how good is it still, like dispose and recycle and, and so on. And yeah, still doesn't work. And I poked around a little bit and I always knew from 15, 20 years of embedded stuff, this USB and SCSI stuff, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's glitchy. Under the hood, it is uh, either USB mass storage of um, bulk only transport um, or the new stuff is USB attached SCSI. What this means is that um, multiple protocol levels at work and of course everyone varies even in old USB enclosures, IDE drives, SCSI drives, um, serial ATA drives, and now uh, PCIe M.2 drives and so on. So there are multiple levels. And this bridge is, depending on what this bridge, I do have, well, I just put it away. But anyway, the bridge I see, um, depending on what this bridge is, does sometimes not very much, just repacking this stuff from SCSI, IDE, serial ATA to USB. And I poked around with smart control you have here, uh, also not shut down, smart control with device, um, Jmicron and other bridges. And yeah, nothing worked. Um, like basically there was nothing coming out. Into, is this by the way, is it right? I had here multiple drives on the desk. Uh, get now this is another one. Um, and if you, so if all the Linux distributions out there, like all of them, the 1883 from uh, Debian, Red Hat, Suze, and so on. So you plug in this or many other Seagate or all, all other Seagate drives and you will not get any smart data. And um, I didn't want to continue using it without knowing how trustworthy this is. I poked around a little bit and I'm so shocked. I thought this like, I thought like this garbage Seagate stuff again, like low quality consumer stuff, of course, non, non standard stuff, nothing really works much. But turns out, no, it's actually the freaking Linux kernel again that does things, does things wrong. Um, back in uh, 2017, they actually committed because all those bridges you probably have seen, all the quirks in the Linux kernel of that doesn't work that way or this device is broken. And the usual like OS news, um, it's like, yeah, software sucks, hardware is amazing. No, usually hardware sucks and software needs to work around a million bucks like Intel Spectrum Meltdown and serial ATA bridges. So it turns out because they had to quirk so many devices of USB, uh, UAS, um, UAS, USB touch SCSI, UAS, that they simply, it's like, yeah, YOLO, whatever, all Seagate enclosures have broken ATA path through supports, like, yeah, YOLO, whatever, uh, we don't allow this, like, what the heck? So I also have uh, two things for that. The one is, of course, the other is that it's like, yeah. Um, I'm really not amused. This kind of stuff wastes uh, 100, if not 1,000, certainly 10,000 hours a month or year worldwide of IT people looking into some stuff. And this kind of stuff really drives me nuts for 20 years. And why all the negativity here on this channel is like, yeah, I'm really sorry. I didn't write this stuff, right? Um, and uh, how does it waste 10,000 of hours of IT professionals, all the admins in some business university all over um, the world or hobbyist 
they try to get stuff working for hours. Not like me, of course, I get this working in 30 minutes, others might Google three hours. And of course, I'm not the only one. Um, it's like, yeah, the internet is full with stuff like this. Uh, this year is uh, 2019, also already two years uh, in the making on GNU B, whatever that is, no idea. I also found this on um, open wireless router stuff, open WRT. Um, and the, for me, of course, um, I would even argue, well, of course, the hardware shouldn't be so freaking buggy. Um, how to do this better? I would totally argue like this code has nothing to do. This is also the attention to detail that I would to do differently in my microkernel stuff. I uh, certainly need to continue writing that. Um, in T2, um, some say one of the most amazing source distributions. I patched this now away. I really don't like too many clut cluttering our stuff with uh, too many custom you could call here yeah, because we don't patch the stuff much exactly. Yeah, Linux kernel getting a little bit out of hand in the meantime. It's like yeah, um, 26 patches or so. It's like, yeah, although some are just stealing the clear Linux stuff or some. Um, uh, some live streams ago. So uh, I think I didn't, yeah, you see, oh, sorry, I misspelled this move. U A S U A S C gate, of course. So I just commented that out. I could also fully remove that though. Um, you know what, maybe we just do this to keep this even shorter. This is from 8 make 6. Um, so actually, you know what, this is a little bit stupid from HMIG5 because honestly this, uh, this and then potentially this uh, from 8MIG I removed two, oh, I think like that. Let's see if this still applies. Um, maybe it does sometimes, um, I'm a little bit over. So yeah, this works. I tested this. Um, this makes smart work on this. Um, in my opinion, I it's like, and I would even argue that this works like that. Yeah, this doesn't apply because no, I can clean this up in a moment. Um, in my opinion, the Linux kernel should also not check for that. If you run their commands from user space like smartmon tools, um, why even quirks this, right? Either it works, either it works, either it doesn't. The only thing is sometimes from my experience, of course, I know I'm not naive, like the scanner business here of ours reverse engineered over 500, soon probably 550. And unfortunately, um, unlike like OS news of like, nah, software sucks hardware, it's amazing, like no. Um, I know from my experience, even this much bigger devices than USB bridges here, also of course there are also kind of USB bridges in there. What really pisses me off and also is super annoying that this bloody scanning devices, if you send them something happens, of course, in my reverse engineering, you reverse engineer something, um, you mimic the Windows driver, you do something slightly different and the bloody firmware crashes, happens like 90% of the time, super freaking annoying. Usually they even need a power cycle. And this is of course the only argument for this. Um, you need to quirk this because if you send a command, maybe the freaking USB bridge crashes and doesn't respond to any other further commands. That is of course a little bit annoying and then you need to plug the USB cable out and in again to power cycle and reset this. This would be the only argument. Otherwise, it's like, yeah, why even filter this freaking stuff? Let's just, if the user runs some smart mount tools, um, usually it should work nowadays. Anyway, it even works with this, I think 2000, I probably could Google that, maybe 2016 or how old this uh, device was when this uh, Seagate 7 uh, release um, and um, 2015. 15 apparently, so yeah, even this is a little bit older. But yeah, even this 2015 device freaking just works TM so much to in 2017 patching all of this stuff away and taking away needlessly, in my opinion, totally needlessly breaking this for way too many users. So um, yeah, I slightly wonder why this I mean, we didn't even need to UAS. So, yeah, if, so if you're wondering, also um, you could potentially quirks this with booting this USB storage quirks equals, which in my opinion is a little bit error prone. So uh, booting this either USB storage quirks uh, hex VID, PID, vendor ID, product ID, 
Um, you or maybe better nothing. Um, although I didn't test this. Uh, one person somewhere in some other forum somewhere posted this work. I, I didn't test this because this is for me to help run. I don't want to freaking reboot five times. And I want this in general working like, um, imagine each time I'm on a workstation server somewhere um, of all the uh, increasing people in the world using T2, you just want to check something and it's like you need to freaking reboot your workstation or server just to quirk this. In my opinion, uh, also you could say yeah, uh, just RM mod and mod probe. In my case, of course, I'm booting from an UAS uh, SSD, USB 3.0 uh, SSD. So from in my case, I can't uh, remod probe this if my root file system is mounted with that. Um, one, two, th how many do one, two, three, one, two, th one, two, one, two. Mm. Sometimes the Linux kernel, uh, the sometimes patch doesn't. Uh, like so little context. Um, although I think at one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, ah, did I miscount this? Oh, no, I counted four. Yeah, so much to manually editing patches. If this still doesn't apply, then I freaking redo this. Anyway, I hope you learned something. I also said it's not always a hardware fault. Uh, so much to hand, hand editing patches. Um, it's not always the hardware's fault. Um, often it's unfortunately of course software and uh, recurring theme of why I'm not the most impressed by the Linux kernel anymore. I never was uh, for me even from 2000 uh, to today the C code quality thereof um, reverting. Uh, use after free pointer dereference and out of bounds uh, is uh, sheer crazy for one of the world's most successful kernel like use after free uh, revert and this is just one freaking tiny um, patch level 5.11.3 and uh, deref in case you were wondering of general protection for uh, fold power, uh, power and it's like yeah um, I rest my case no further questions yeah so um, anyway don't really uh, you know what I, I don't need to clean this up even more it's it's uh, fine it's, it's, it's kind of sort of oh, yeah. uh, maybe uh, you know what maybe I did uh, I think I did this wrong. I think this I, I didn't uh, delete. Yeah. This probably could. Anyway, um, as much as I don't like um, having patches there, um, I also want my freaking stuff working. And um, if you desperately need to blacklist some stuff, then really blacklist the stuff that is failing. And in my humble opinion, also not the most feature-proof thing as uh, seen. It's like, yeah, 2017, some years in, uh, totally not, obviously totally not feature-proof of forever Blacklist uh, Seagate stuff. Um, it would have been better to just, if you wanted to filter those ATA path-through um, commands to Blacklist that historic stuff that was broken, if, in my opinion, you really need to do that. Um, you could also potentially do this dynamically um, if this first pass-through command fails, then do not even try any further. Um, if it's possible and the, the firmware doesn't crash uh, entirely, um, to not respond further to any more commands. Anyway, um, that's it for this update. I hope you learned something. We can continue some other 20 minutes on the More Life channel. That should be probably there in that corner um, and merge uh, at least one or two patches there on the Discord server um, of, of users running to two and sending in some patches. Again, it's not always the hardware that is the most broken. Of course, sometimes it is, but sometimes also the software. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos and live streams to come.